Ooh. Hey guys, Josiah Willis here, here to talk to you about poop. Now today I'm actually going to be talking about septic and sewer systems. So make sure you pay attention, stay till the end. All right, you're going to learn something. So I hope you're not in the middle of eating because today we're going to be talking about public versus septic systems. Josiah with Caliber Real Estate here, and today I'm going to be showing you and blowing the lid off the myths regarding septic and public sewer systems. By the end of today, you'll be a much more informed buyer or seller when it comes to the pros and cons of each system. So I may even change your mind about which system is best. So if you haven't already watched my uh, video on septic systems 101, uh, you're probably going to want to take a look at that one uh, because in that video I go in depth about septic systems and piercing Pearson King County requirements associated with maintaining them. So I also talk about the different common systems uh, like gravity versus pump systems. Um, that being said, let's get into the co comparisons to each type of system and what you need to know. So you need to stay to the end though because I'm going to be sharing a fact about King County that you'll want to know based upon what they require in a certain circumstance. So as you can see uh, in this picture, the picture to my right is a picture showing a public system. Um, and the sewer and wastewater goes from the house directly to the manhole or public sewer line, which would be near the center of the street. Uh, in the picture close to me, I'm kind of in the way here, uh, this shows a gravity-fed uh, septic system that has the wastewater come from the house, enter the septic tank where the solids fall to the bottom and start to, to deteriorate and or build up over time, while the water leaves the tank and travels to the drain field, which is basically a corrugated pipe that has small holes where the water trickles into the surrounding gravel and then gets filtrated naturally by the soil as it passes through multiple soil, low, uh, soil layers, um, eventually returning to the water table and uh, becoming drinkable again and cleansed. So public sewer uh, must travel to a sewer treatment plant where they treat the raw sewage in order to have the water clean enough to be put back into the water table. Uh, that was a brief example of sort of how both systems operate, but let's move on uh, to the, the real meat and potatoes of your crap that's flowing through the sewer pipe as we speak. So, in order to compare septic to public sewer, it's important to understand there are differences in septic systems that compare to public sewer differently in terms of maintenance. Uh, the most common old style system you'll see in King County is actually a gravity fed system, uh, which is the easiest to maintain by the way, but upon new installation requirements, pump systems are a bare minimum nowadays, according to King County. Uh, this means septic maintenance is a little bit more expensive than gravity systems uh, because the pump systems have moving parts and septic backup alarms uh, which need to be maintained and inspected, uh, checked more often essentially. So the recommendation is once a year for a pump system to be um, inspected or checked on. That doesn't necessarily mean you have to hire someone to come out, but check it yourself. Um, but that's sort of the, uh, that's sort of the, what the uh, suggestion is basically essentially generated it basically from your own self and that filters back into the soil and then back into the water table naturally. Uh, whereas public sewer is actually obviously pumped into public utility system that's uh, routed through a large distribution network of pipes underground throughout the city and then goes to a, a sewage treatment plant like you see here on the right. Um, there's been times where sewage treatment plants end up overflowing and a lot of that raw sewage gets leaked into the Puget Sound which is definitely not good for the environment. So. Um, another thing to keep, keep in mind is that when a public sewer line fails, which oftentimes is happening more and more now because our infrastructure was laid years and years ago and now pipes are deteriorating, um, it causes a huge headache for tearing up roads to install um, a new pipeline. Uh, lots of money involved uh, could back up traffic. Uh, you're ripping up you know, lots of uh, asphalt or concrete to do so. So that's another thing to keep in mind, whereas everything is localized on a septic system on site, generally speaking. Um, so round one goes to septic systems. Round two, backups and overflows, like I mentioned a little bit. So um, it actually is possible for uh, raw sewage to back up um, on a public system. Uh, a lot of people think that only backups happen on septic systems. They do happen on septic systems if you're not maintaining it correctly or something is not working right. Uh, but with public sewer, oftentimes it can back up. And as you can see here, here's sort of a picture of um, three homes and this is actually really relevant to Seattle because Seattle is very hilly, right? So if you have a house, um, if you have slope and you have homes that are a little bit higher than the last one on the block, uh, you can see here the sewer main crap has to run downhill. I learned that from my plumber uncle, right? So pipes always have to have a certain depth and a certain um, 
uh, every, every so few feet, there has to be slope, right? So that poop can run downhill. So basically, as you can see here, um, this one has a pretty serious grade in terms of how far down it's going um, because it's on a hillside. So um, what you'll see here, though, is oftentimes backup can happen, um, and that can happen on the house that's actually lowest, um, right? Because if, if this is starting to back up, the house up there's the very top isn't going to back up. It's going to be this one first because it's the lowest here. And so um, poop that's backing up here is going to hit the basement of this house before it gets to the other ones. So oftentimes backwater valves are actually necessary. So a backwater valve helps stop that um, from happening. Um, as you can read here, um, it's backwater valves unnecessary for the, the house in this example at the very top. Um, backwater valve possibly unnecessary for first floor but recommended for basement of the second house and obviously very important on this house because of where it sits relative to um, the down, downstream manhole in case of a backup. So I should go back a little bit. Round two actually was probably more one with uh, septic systems because it could happen with a backup of the septic system but keep in mind that um, a septic system backup is only your poop and, and sewer rather than your neighbors which is kind of gross. So let's talk about round three, maintenance, um, and sort of installation here as well. So uh, the pros to a septic system in terms of uh, maintenance is it's actually less costly over the life to maintain it yearly normally than to pay the sewer and capacity charges that public utilities will charge you. Uh, so, and if, if, a, if a pipe fails um, on your property that still leads to public sewer, you're responsible as the homeowner for any section of pipe that comes out of your house all the way up to the point where it meets the manhole or uh, public sewer line in the middle of the street. So anything from your house up to the middle of the street is actually your responsibility to replace and fix if anything goes wrong with that. So very important to use a, a sewer scope, which is where during an inspection, if you're under contract to purchase, which is where someone comes out and sticks basically a camera and a flashlight down your toilet system to see if the pipe that leads out to the street is actually in good condition. Um, otherwise, you could be <laughs> not saving yourself very much headache in case of a pipe failure so uh, and lots of money obviously so um, generally speaking septic system um, maintenance is actually less expensive because it can be yearly or even um, more uh, distant it doesn't necessarily have to be every year if you have like a gravity system for maintenance but it generally is less expensive than paying um, capacity charges for hooking up new sewer uh, or also for um, you know monthly billings essentially from utility companies so um, the cons, though, is that there's more work involved, so you have to pump the system every few years, depending on the system you have and how many bedrooms it supports, how big the family is, essentially like that. Um, the inspection also costs money to inspect upon um, title transfer if you're going to be selling the property or uh, deeding it to somebody else. Uh, you have to pay for an inspection as well. Um, uh, replacement parts are also necessary in the case that maybe a failed pump or alarm ha happened. Uh, to, it happened to fail on you, you have to replace that. Uh, that would be obviously be for a pump system, but it could be a distribution box or whatever may not be working. You need to replace that. But uh, the other side of that too is for septic, that if you the tank fails, you have to replace the tank. That could be pretty expensive. That could be upwards of uh, 20 grand or so. It uh, just depends on the type of system, where it's located, how, how difficult it is to access the property to install, and things of that nature. So uh, public though, um, there's less work in, involved with maintenance. Obviously, you don't do hardly any maintenance, um, if any at all. Uh, the cons, though, is it's more expensive, like I said, uh, relative to septic. Um, as you can see, you're going to be paying capacity monthly fees, sewer hookup fees. Um, if a developer built a brand new development and had to connect to public sewer and you bought one of those brand new homes, oftentimes people don't realize, but the developer ends up paying the capacity fee that the city charges for adding additional um, homes onto the public sewer line. He passes that on and separates that cost out on a per home basis, puts that on the title of that new construction house so that uh, whoever buys it, whoever's the buyer of the new construction house, ends up paying those sewer capacity fees. And those could last, that, that lasts as long as the property, or, or lasts with the property in terms of being on title up until it's paid off. And that sometimes that's all the way, that could be like 10, 15 years. So the buyer who buys that ends up paying the, the sewer capacity charge that the developer spread out over all the homes he connected because he's not going to pay that charge. Otherwise, it wouldn't be economically feasible oftentimes to develop in the first place. So um, that gets passed on to the homeowner for new construction, generally speaking. And uh, 
obviously you have monthly fees for utilizing sewer in addition to the capacity charge. So a lot more expensive on that side of things. Um, but the replacement parts are, like I said before, just whatever is considered from your house leading up to the public uh, sewer line in the middle of the street is your responsibility. So if any of that part fails, that's your responsibility to replace. Could be cost costly in the case of failure, but probably not as costly as re reinstalling a brand new septic system. So um, yeah, that's sort of the, uh, the just of that comparison. So um, kind of take it with a grain of salt. Not really sure who won this round. I think it kind of depends um, on what your preferences are. So round number four uh, would be lot usable space. So this is a clear win for public uh, systems because septic requires uh, a large lot, a larger lot size in order to fit a, a septic system and drain field on site. Um, but there's also something called a reserve area. If you haven't watched my other video, I, I say that you, you should. But a reserve area basically is a backup drain field in case the main one fails with your septic system. And this area has to be kept clean along with your regular drain field area, um, free of any impervious surface, which means you can't build sidewalks, you can't build decks, you can't build a shed or a garage over the same area that your septic system is under in the, buried in the ground. Uh, that's because uh, that causes um, issues when you try to access the property, but it also needs to make sure that there's no compaction of soil uh, so that water can actually, um, sewage water can actually leak out of the perforated piping down below. Um, and if it's too compacted, uh, that could cause problems and build up and back up. So that's why you're not allowed to build anything over drain fields. So that's one thing to keep in mind, but with a public, if you're hooked up to public uh, utilities, it doesn't really matter because um, you can build pretty much anywhere on your lot, except you probably wouldn't want to build right over the pipe that leads from your house to the actual public sewer so that you can access it in case of any issues, but uh, a lot more usable space with, with public. So I want to tell you kind of this interesting story if you didn't watch my other video, but essentially this is actually a case where we do a lot of flipping and, and rehabbing of properties here at Caliber, and our investors ended up purchasing this property here that's um, I'm standing right in front of uh, in Issaquah that uh, the original investor ran out of money on and we purchased it and ended up um, having an end result looking like this. So what was interesting though is we actually hired a um, person from King, ha King County Health Department to come out and take a look at the septic system to check off on it before selling the property and he gave us a clean bill of health said everything's good which is actually required on time of transfer to have. Uh, so we got we got his approval and uh, but what was funny is actually a nosy neighbor ended up calling on us and told the, the King County Health Department to come back out for some reason, not really sure why, but uh, they came back out and looked, take a look at um, the septic system, different guy from the same department though, and said, no, you need to replace the system. And we said, why? We have a clean bill of health here from the last inspector. He said that it doesn't matter. Basically the updates that you created with this house makes the house life last longer than the septic system will um, that services the house, even though it was working just fine and there were no issues with it. He basically said, well, the house is, out, is gonna outlive the septic system's lifespan. So you need to replace it right now. So what was interesting is we had, they had to dig, the investors had to dig up basically concrete, chip up concrete to access the septic system um, and then end up replacing the whole system with a brand new system, which cost upwards of 20 grand, probably more. Um, and then, uh, yeah, even though we had already gotten a signed off bill of health from the King County Health Department. so. Ended up working out just fine, and obviously the buyers who bought the house were pretty happy having a brand new septic system. So, but all that to say, keep that in mind that sometimes you can get differing opinions from um, King County, uh, not only health department but also from um, just different government jurisdictions. So, um, but moving on. So, uh, this is sort of interesting uh, in terms of what is required by King County. If you have a system that fails, uh, a septic system that fails on site, um, and your property line is within 200 feet of public, uh, public sewer, you're actually required to hook up to public sewer instead of replacing the, the current septic system with a brand new septic system. That's actually um, required by the county. Um, there are sometimes uh, variances in this that can, you can get around uh, to not having to do that, but generally speaking, you'll have to do it. Um, some of the variances may include um, expressing that it'll be undue hardship on you as the homeowner because uh, one, it might be um, economically feasible to reinstall a uh, septic system versus actually dragging, digging up sewer to connect to your property and you might be cro crossing over like another person's property or whatever to do that. And sometimes they'll grant a variance. But generally speaking, if you have a septic system that fails on site and you're within 200 feet, this public sewer is within 200 feet of your property line, you're gonna have to hook up to public sewer. 
Some people might like that, just depends. So in conclusion, who won the debate? Uh, it kind of depends on what's important to you, honestly. So uh, septics are generally cheaper than public sewer. Um, like I mentioned from a, uh, from a maintenance perspective, uh, but both septics and public sewers uh, systems are actually getting older. So um, you know, it may make more sense for septic repla replacement more viable. Um, in terms of the costs and benefits of replacing because obviously sewer pipes are going to be bursting in, in uh, sewer streets probably more often as time goes on. Um, but also, uh, you know, there's less work required with public sewer in terms of maintenance and things of that nature. Um, but I will say that uh, sewer backups do happen with both types of systems. Uh, just a matter of how well you're maintaining your septic system and then what, what is going on with the aging pipelines in public sewer. Um, and if there's backups happening there. Uh, another thing to keep in mind as well is that in septic systems generally are a little bit more environmentally friendly than public systems. So keep that on mind, guys. I hope this kind of sheds some light on the debate whether or not you want to buy a property on septic or public sewer. Um, don't be afraid of septics too much. I grew up on a septic system all my life, never had any issues with it. Um, in fact, my dad, I don't recommend this, but my my parents didn't actually um, pump it as often as they, they actually um, advise you to, and we never had any issues. But our system, our system was built, I think, in the 80s, which is a little different than a lot of systems that are built in King County, uh, a lot of them really old. Um, and so, you know, eventually they will need to re be replaced. But it's just something to consider. Um, I hope this has been really informational for you guys. Uh, give me a call if you are interested in buying or selling real estate. Um, I'd love to help you or at least have a conversation of whether or not I'd be a good fit for you. Um, I also work with investors and builders, so I'm familiar with pretty much every area of real estate. Uh, so yeah, don't be afraid of septics. Give me a call if you're in the market to buy or sell and uh, would love to help you out. So thanks for watching and check out some of my other videos on YouTube and my Facebook page. Thanks guys. Take care. Bye. Hey guys, I hope you liked my video. Um, wanted to actually tell you, please go check out my other video. Um, called Septic Systems 101, if you haven't already. Uh, in that video, I actually go through uh, septic systems, how they work, different types of them, what to be uh, aware of. So you're not going to want to miss that one, but please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any other future real estate videos. Um, I oftentimes um, interview expert inter uh, real estate professionals, uh, whether it be inspectors, CPAs, attorneys, things of that nature. So you're not going to want to miss it. So please hit the subscribe button. Also, leave me a comment and let me know what you liked about this video or what else I could actually help you with. Um, or even like the page, give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Um, yeah, also can, you can go to my Facebook page if you haven't already, uh, Josiah Willis at Caliber. Um, so please uh, subscribe and hope to see you again soon. Watch my other video. Thanks, guys. Take care.